Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway. And the last couple of days of this week, we're going to focus on recruiting. We'll talk high school recruiting tomorrow for K-State football because uh, Drew will be at camp later today. And so we'll have stuff from that and plenty of other things to kind of keep everybody up to date on. But right now, we're going to talk about basketball because there are still two spots on the roster that need to be filled up. So there's a look right there at the current status of the K-State basketball roster. We know what they've added. Two really, really high-profile guys in Doug McDaniel and Achora Chore. And then I think you view it and see uh, both Max and C.J. Jones as really solid role guys. Brendan Housen falls in there as well. Uh, we know what David Gasson will bring as a guy that probably plays 20 to 25 minutes off the bench because I still ultimately think that's where – David Gasson's sweet spot and the most that he can provide to this team comes from. And so then you're looking around and wondering, okay, what comes next? Because while I think the team that is currently on the roster is in a good spot and is a team that is capable of making the NCAA tournament, that's not really the goal. It's you want to be able to compete towards the top of the Big 12 and you want to be able to have the chance to make a run when you get into the NCAA tournament and you're going to need a little bit more depth for that. You're going to need a couple more options, uh, at, you know, in guys that are going to be a little bit bigger. We know that K-State is missing serious size right now. So with that in mind, like my, my point of view is K-State would be nice to get another guy that stands at about six, nine or taller. And then if you can find a guy that can play roughly the same, type of role as Arthur Kaluma last year. Maybe you don't need him to play as many minutes, but you'd like a guy with some size that can play really anywhere from the three to the four. You know, if you wanted to get really small, you could play him at the five and survive and, and all these different things. But that's what you're looking for. This team is is good on guards right now. You don't need to worry about that. Uh, so, in, you know, I could be wrong there. So how do you see it, Drew? What, what do you think this team needs to do with those final two scholarships that are open? Yeah, I mean, you you hit it on the head, and it's something that we've all just kind of talked about uh, privately together, that this team is probably missing a big and probably, I think that CJ Jones and Max Jones could probably play the, the three in a pinch, so you probably need the bigger wing that could play like the three, four, instead of like the two, three. So, I, I mean, I think that that's probably like the two missing pieces. And, and to be honest, with how the roster's, kind of come together even with the two spots i'm in the same boat as you where i think that k State's probably a tournament team right now it's just about adding more and more to kind of get them further and get them a higher seed but i i don't think that you really need to look super hard to kind of talk yourself into this team will be much better than the team that was on the court last season or this past season uh because of just the fit and the roles seem a lot more defined. And I think that they have more firepower as well. Like we talked uh, when Achora Achora committed that we think that there could be four or five guys that could get double figure scoring. But if you add a bigger wing that can really put the ball in the hole, I mean, that, that's a sixth guy that you think, oh, he could add 10, 15 points on a good night or maybe even get up to the 20 point range, depending on who it is. So I think that you can really look at the roster right now and kind of get excited because you have two spots open, but the two spots that are open, I think that you can still find some big difference makers because the team right now is very, very solid. Yeah, I, th I think you're, you're set up right now, and I think at the top you feel good about what there is, but this is it, it feels kind of like what we've talked about with football uh, in some years in the past, you know, in the, in the recent uh, – history where it's like okay you feel really good about the top of what's going on but you start to lose a guy or two boy it drops off pretty hard and you're going to have some serious questions and probably some serious problems that come out of it so in terms of what k-state has available to them really at this point you're going to look everywhere to find guys i mean as we know they, they got moby and ek garuka from the juco level and that's that, that one to me is one of those that seems like such a wild card where we don't know what he's going to provide. Because I guess before we dive into some of the, the portal guys, I'll, I'll bring this up. So in my eyes, you have Doug McDaniel, C.J. Jones, Brendan Housen, David Gasson, 
Max Jones and Achora Chor, those are the guys that you know are going to be on the floor. And if you have to play them 20 minutes or more a game, they can handle it. They're ready for this level. And then you have what I would call some wild cards in terms of we don't know what development over the summer is going to look like, and we don't know how they might find a role this coming season. Uh, these are guys that they could either play, find their way to playing 20 minutes a game next year, or could also be redshirt candidates. So Moby and Kigaruka would be in that list for me. Michaela Rich would be in that list. David Castillo would be in that list. And Bay Fall would be in that list. And then Taj Manning, he's already used the red shirt. I think we kind of know what he is at this point. I don't expect major minutes from Taj Manning uh, really at any point during his K-State career uh, just because of you know what we've seen at this point. So that leaves a lot of question marks. And in the game of college basketball, it's not necessarily – uh, the easiest to just throw, you know, five question marks out there and say, well, at least one of them is going to hit. That's not necessarily the case. Like you could be, you know, all those guys aren't going to be able to figure it out and maybe none of them do. So you really need to bring two guys in with those final two spots, in my opinion, that you feel like you can at least trust to be on the floor. And that's, that's where I sit with what they should be looking for. And I, it'll be interesting to see where they find it. Cause there are some really good players left in the portal. Uh, but those guys have, really, really good options in front of them in terms of whatever they're looking for. It's, if it's a desperate team with a scholarship left that's really, really good, or if it's a desperate team that has silly NIL money to spend on guys that don't really deserve it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that there's probably six guys that you can, that you feel comfortable playing 20-plus minutes. Uh, this is another thing that I was just kind of thinking of while we were kind of talking about, or while you were talking about uh, the minutes. I would kind of like the bigger wing to be able to have the ball in his hands a little bit more and kind of be like a second or like a third uh, option on the ball. That way, Doug McDaniel isn't just on the ball all the time. I know that CJ Jones is a, can be a primary ball handler and Max Jones can as well. But if you can add another one that can play along, play on the wing and be like that 6'6", six, 6'6", six, 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 range, I think that that really kind of opens it up because everybody needs to be able to handle the ball. That way you kind of don't see what happened to Tyler Perry last year, where a lot of teams just kind of ganged up on him because he was the only really like major primary ball handler. So if you can add another one like that, I think that that would be kind of nice. And it would also kind of ease up and kind of open up the offense because while Doug McDaniel has a lot of good playmaking ability, his ability to shoot the ball is also a plus and you'd probably want that to be something that you can free up off the ball. Yeah. That, and I, I, I would agree with that. I think the really, cause honestly, at the end of the day, the more guys that you have that you can trust to possess the ball in college basketball, the better off you are. I mean, really at any level, but I think in college basketball, you get an added element to that because there are some guys that defensively just aren't equipped to handle a guy that can play that way. So if you do have it at a position, you know, beyond one of your standard guard spots, that can be dangerous. Like we saw, you know, I, everybody brings up the Achora Chor play where he gets past Hunter Dickinson in the NCAA tournament. Like that's a valuable weapon for a chore to have with his yeah. size and the position he's going to be at. Uh, so and that's also one of those two when we talk about what K State might be looking for in the portal with what's left. If you get a guy like that, you can, or that has that skill, they can be a little bit lower on, you know, where they would rank or where the talent level might be in terms of what's expected of them. Because, like, we're, I'm going to throw it up here in a second, but like the top guys left on the list uh, of transfers, like, K-State's going to have their shot at a couple, but there's going to be a lot of competition. It's going to be really tough to get some of those. If you're going further down and you're trying to find somebody, one thing that always translates and can get a guy some minutes if you absolutely have to have it is athleticism and the ability to kind of take care of the ball. And I would I would go back to year number one of Jerome Tang, and like Tyke Green did not play a ton, but you know they could put him on the floor and he played some – because he just had a knack for athleticism and he could do some things every once in a while. And if you're going to get desperate in the portal, and I'm not saying K-State's there yet, but if you are, that's the kind of route to go instead of, uh, yeah, this guy, he kind of has a little bit of everything, but he's not really good at this. Like, I think at this stage you want to value a guy that just has that natural playmaker in him 
no matter what the the ceiling for his skill is, you're looking for guys that the floor is pretty high. Yeah, th- this team, I think the thing that they're really missing and the missing link would be another guy that can really kind of go and get their own. Like you already have that with Doug McDaniel. You think that you have that with Max Jones. If they can add a, a third guy that can go and with the shot clock winding down or the game clock winding down and say, this is my ball and I'm going to go score. I think that that's kind of like the the missing piece. And to to have that skill, you have to be a, pro, a good ball handler and not turn the ball over. So I think that we're kind of in agreement of where K-State's at. So I, I, I'm really excited to see the names pop up. And I know that everybody's kind of impatient right now because it's a dead period. And some people are or some schools are getting commits from other guys. But those are also guys that had already visited uh, before. So I think that we're kind of in this kind of wait and see mode. And post dead period, I think we're going to see some more fireworks again. Yeah, and if you're you're wondering, okay, why is there this emphasis on May 30th of transfer portal again? Well, it's because you do have this is like a a reinvigoration of the pool of transfer portal guys. We talked about how you're not going to get anybody new added to it. This, in some ways, is as close as you can get to adding new players because we now know who is and isn't coming back to college next year. So all of these guys on this list, they backed out of the NBA draft or they were already, you know, they were still in and they weren't even attempting the NBA draft. But here are some of the top transfers remaining. Uh, according to on three there on the left side is their overall rank in the transfer portal. And some of these names we know that K-State is heavily involved in. Probably the most notable to everybody is Yugona Onyensu. Uh, who will be a junior this coming season. He played his last two seasons at Kentucky. Um, the The scoring wasn't really a high number. He was like a three and a half points per game there and, and grabbed four or five rebounds a game in like 18 minutes. So he did play a significant amount in the SEC on an NCAA tournament team. He would fit the bill pretty specifically of, of the kind of guy that I think K-State should look to add at least one spot with, which is a bigger guy that can play minutes that you trust on Yinsu would fit that bill. And then one of the other ones that probably slaps you over the head is, well, what's the chances of an Arthur Kaluma reunion? How does that end up working out? I'm sure uh, that's something that could be explored, and uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. We know that K-State has had some interest in Jameer Watkins, the Florida State transfer. Kind of everybody uh, that's left looking for a guy would be interested in Jameer Watkins. It's just a matter of how realistic is that going to be. Um, because again, K State, you know, that you could figure they've already used a pretty good portion of their upper echelon NIL pool uh, to get Doug McDaniel and a chore chore, which it, I'm not faulting them for. Like, I think those are two really good gets for them. Uh, and the difference on Watkins and McDaniel is that McDaniel has two years left to play, Watkins just has one. Uh, and then the other name in there that is the most fascinating to me. Uh, that I think would be a pipe dream for K-State to get just because I think the suitors will be pretty high and it's there's going to be a lot of factors. But Coleman Hawkins from Illinois, he he basically is one player that can do everything we've just talked about wanting where you think about what Coleman Hawkins can do and what he can be. He can go get his own at any point in the game. He can handle the ball. He's 6'10". Like, he fits everything in there. So, I, like, Everything we said beforehand at the top, what we're, what we think K State should look for, Coleman Hawkins would fit that. I think he'd be the perfect player, and I, you know, he'd be pretty dynamic for people to watch. But again, uh, there's just there's going to be a lot there. So, of the guys that are there, or other guys that aren't on the radar, uh, we'll talk about this in terms of reality because I think the transfer portal conversation has to be based in reality before anything else. And I think there are a lot of people. They just see names and want to throw it out there and go. They're like, mm, okay, the, in case they could go get this guy. Well, yeah, they could. Like, you know, it'd be nice if they could add LeBron James to their roster, but they can't. You know, he plays for the Lakers, so that's going to be tough to do. Um, with the guys that are there and the most realistic, uh, where where do you think K State could go, and and what are their prospects of getting some of these guys that are some of the best remaining in the portal? I think that one of the guys that's probably the most realistic is the guy that you hit on first with uh, Yugana on Yesu. I think that K-State's been kind of in contact for a while, and it wouldn't surprise me if he's one of the guys that 
once the dead period or opens back up and we're back in a contact period and visits are allowed that he's one that ends up visiting and the, the longer that i've kind of watched and studied how uh, you got on yesu he kind of reminds me of like a a diet clifford amore where any offensive production that you get out of amore and on yesu is welcome but they are defensive guys first and foremost and, and i think that if you kind of look at on yesu's numbers and watch him I mean, he is a tremendous shot blocker. I know that I've kind of said that shot blocking is a little bit overrated if you can't get the rebound. Uh, but he's a big time shot blocker, can rebound, has good feet, and is something that K State's kind of looking for in that five spot. The another, he's probably the most realistic. The other ones like Jameer Watkins, I think, would be kind of like the the dream scenario to pair with Don Yasu. Yeah. Uh, because J- Jameer Watkins can really fill it up, has good size, good length. If you take on Yesu, you probably can't get Coleman Hawkins because I, I just don't know where the fit would be with those two guys. Arthur Kaluma's not like an unrealistic scenario, but I, it's more of just me being hesitant to say that that's a likely thing because I, I just... I can't remember times where guys have entered the portal and then gone through the draft and then came back to the original school. So it's hard for me to really kind of think about that and how that would play out. But, but I think that on yes, he was looking more and more likely as, as we get kind of closer to the contact period opening up. Yeah. To me, it feels like K state is in a better spot today than they were a week and a half ago with Onyensu. And some of that has to do with what, you know, what their, their pitch and layout could have been for him. And then also the scenario and situation of others that were involved. So that's one that like of the guys that just showed up on that list, he would probably be number one to me of candidates for what is left. And then you go beyond that and you try and figure out, okay, What's the fifth and and how do you figure some of these other guys out? Like you said, Watkins is one of those that he's going to have a lot of suitors. It's probably that's probably not going to happen. I'm sure you would love to try. And there's no doubt that K-State will. But it feels like that's a tough one to to kind of get to, to fit in there. And Kaluma, I, I do think a lot of people will think, well, Arthur Kaluma, could he come back now? I think there's the possibility of that. But I look at it a lot like the Ish Masood situation from, uh, you know, a year ago where two different types of players and roles are different, but the scenario kind of plays out the same for them. And I've, I've repeated this before, but like it was okay. Ish wants a bigger and better role for his last year. And K-State just knows that they're not going to be able to provide that for him because their ceiling is with him, not in a bigger role like that. Like their ceiling would have been with him doing what he did. And I, you know, I think in, in aspects, he could have been valuable to K-State last year. And certainly an elevated role at Georgetown, it did not work out for Georgetown. They were god-awful last year. Again. Arthur Kaluma, yeah, again. <laughs> Arthur Kaluma is one of those where he is probably looking for a situation where he can be the guy again, one of those top two players on a team, and kind of you know be the show and do whatever he needs to to up his NBA draft stock because him coming back, he obviously was told things that he didn't like, and I look at what Arthur Kaluma has been in college, and I just don't know that the improvement has been drastic. I think last year, a lot of what went went into his game was probably just an uptick in terms of responsibility and what was there. So if Arthur Kaluma wants that bigger role, like he comes back to K-State next year, he is not one of the two best players on the team, and he's not going to be given that role opportunity like two, one of the two best players on the team. He's going to have to be third, fourth, fifth on that list, and – He's going to have to take a backseat to a guy like Doug McDaniel, who is a lot more dynamic. Uh, you know, a chore chore obviously is going to be looked at to shoulder some of the load in all this. So that one, just for a number of reasons, seems like I guess if we're talking about realistic chances of the guys on this list, maybe Kaluma is number two, just because you already have the relationship. But like if we're talking on Yinsu's like a you know, we, we do confidence meters when we put in predictions on on three. Like if Onyensu is like a, a 65 70 right now, Kaluma, it would be like a like a 15 percent chance in my eyes. Um, just because I 
like that, like you said, the situation is kind of strange. Rarely does a guy enter the portal and come back after going through the draft process to the same school. Uh, and like we know, Coleman Hawkins, he he's in it and he's not going to go back to Illinois um, in, in all likelihood. So just kind of something to, to kind of keep note on. And I think, you know, you said earlier, like if you get on Yensu, does the Hawkins thing fit? I think, I think you can make Coleman Hawkins fit uh, with every, even, even if you bring in on Yensu, I think you can find a way to make it happen just because Hawkins can play a different game. Now you'd look pretty big out on the floor uh, because in, you know, in theory you would be starting uh, him and maybe you, you would be so big that you're like, you know, overloaded with size out there. But I think because of what he can do, that's one of those that um, if you could make it happen, you should. And that's that uh, in my eyes, that would be the first place that I would go if I was K state uh, just because I, I like that game so much. Um, and that's excluding Watkins just because we, we think that that one's even lower on the list. But that's kind of where it stands right now. I, I think one of those names on that list will for sure play at K-State next season. That's what I would say. And I, then, I, I think that I agree with that, yeah. And then the other name, I would say that there's probably a pretty high chance that we either haven't heard it yet or it's not loud enough to be on that list or on the radar of people. And that you probably – you're looking in the bargain bin to try and strike gold with somebody in there, uh, essentially like you did when you got a guy like Desi Sills. And that's not to say that the guys at K-State has already gotten like I Max Jones profiles as that type of guy to where you got a guy that can come in, he can do some offense for you. He, he has a lot of ability and upside uh, in his role, but I think that's possibly where you're looking when it comes to uh, everybody else that's left in there. So I'll, I'll let you have the floor and you can you can go with it where you want. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with that. It's just the, the transfer portal. It seems like news comes out every instead of like every day. Now, it just feels like every few hours. So, like, we're, we're, we're not like 100 percent right now <laughs> with anything because it just seems like everything just changes so fast and there's so much information. But the the dead period being opened back up next week, I think we'll start to get some clarity on K State's big targets, and we'll probably hear more about visits. And I don't really want to say this because it's more of like a hope, but I think that the hope and the goal would be that the roster would be complete within the next couple weeks. I would imagine, and, yeah. and I can and I could see this going very fast because. I mean, it, it's kind of like what other people have pointed out on the board, and I've agreed with it as the more that I've thought about it, is now that we've got through the NBA draft deadline and everybody coming back or is staying in the draft, this is the time where the dead period probably should have been lifted because I imagine that the guys that have withdrawn their name from the NBA draft want to go on visits and commit to their next school because they're, you know, they're just in the portal right now just waiting. Yeah, no, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a lot that we're learning in this process uh, that could probably be changed. Like, you know, there's already the notion that the the portal entry window should be smaller uh, moving forward for basketball. I think that's probably true. Uh, I think I saw the other day that it was thrown out there that it might be shortened to just a, a flat 30 days. So basically a month where the portal's window is open and then boom, you're done. I think that would make sense. And certainly – it seems silly that you have the this wave of guys now that they go through that process and uh, you you don't want to open things up like it seems like it'd be fairly easy to do but also uh, you know the May and June some of the these coaches they they like to find their time somewhere here in the summer to be like yeah we're not giving up this date on the calendar so we can kind of catch our breaths um, so we'll see obviously football they're not in catch their breath mode right now uh, this is their their busiest part of the summer, honestly, is uh, firing up right now. So we'll see how it ends up going. But like I said, I, those guys that we sh showed on the the screen, uh, and if you're listening, go you can go check it out on the KSO YouTube page. But I, I do I feel pretty good in saying that I think one of those guys ends up playing at K State uh, next season, and then from that point, I you should count it as a major win if K State was able to fill the last two spots with two guys on that list because yeah. K State only already K State only has two guys that are 
better uh, in terms of rankings or within that range uh, on the roster right now, the six through 121 in terms of transfers. Uh, so you adding two more of that would be a really, really big deal for you. So we'll see how it ends up going and uh, what comes out for K State in terms of the transfer portal. But that's at least a little update right now. And I'm sure. Once the dead period ends, we'll have a little bit more concrete info on names and guys that might have to make a trip to Manhattan and check things out and be on the horizon for a commitment. So that's uh, that's the basketball recruiting update for today. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing about football for K-State tomorrow on the recruiting trail. I thought Drew was going to add something. Turns out oh. he's not. I thought oh. you were going to give me a little something there, but it's okay. Oh, see, I, I'm excited about uh, tomorrow as well. I've heard good things about where this camp is going to be at talent-wise and excited to kind of share the what I see, share some information that I hear at the camp. And it's going to be a lot of fun. This is my favorite time of the year because uh, the, the camp season for me is really fun because not only do you get to see the kids that are at the camps, uh, but uh, the true freshmen that didn't enroll early all reported uh, yesterday. So it's kind of my first look at how they've kind of progressed uh, body type wise and how they're looking right now uh, since I've hadn't seen a lot of them since the fall. So I'm excited for that as well. All right, there you go. Ringing endorsement to watch tomorrow's show and get the lowdown from Drew on what he saw and some of the other things going on with K-State football because uh, official visits start really in earnest tomorrow, correct, for K-State? Yes, the official visits start tomorrow. and. This is the first weekend that they're, they're all firing up and I think everybody is excited. Uh, I know that you've kind of pressed me about how many commits I think will be at the end of the month for football. And if you read DY's story today, he has a, he put a, a flat number on it. So he did more than I did. Yeah, there you go. All right. Well, uh, that's a, that's a good way to get people to go over to kstateonline.com. Check it out. Get up to date with what Drew and DY know going on with K-State football and basketball. That's it on three. You can come back here tomorrow to the KSO YouTube and podcast page. We'll have you covered uh, with more news on the Cats as we do every single day throughout the week. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.